Let's go with your man Mike Bowens coming to you once again live and direct. Listen, I got another powerful message for you. This message is entitled Raising Godly Children. Raising Godly Children. Now more than ever, I believe this is a this is a message that needs to be heard, it needs to be spread, it needs to go viral. Right? In Jesus' name. I'm gonna drop bombs on your head. Boom, 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 boom. Because guess what? The children now are more under attack than any other time in history because of things like social media, because of the internet, because of cell phones, laptops, iPads, iPhones, right? Computers. They're learning things much faster than we learn them, right? The information is constantly coming at them, images and how they're supposed to look and how they're supposed to dress. They t they're being learned about, they, they, they're being taught about sex at an early age. Now you have boys who want to be girls and girls who want to be boys because they're not taught what God says about these things. And these image are com images are coming so quickly. They're coming in commercials. They're coming in movies, right? And it's overwhelming to the brain. I don't know about you, but sometimes I have to shut the TV off. I have to shut the internet off for a little while because it's overwhelming. Because constantly I'm getting ads. Constantly I'm getting messages. Constantly I'm getting... Um, commercials and movies and oh, it's too much sometimes even in the car I shut it off I just want to hear nothing peace and quiet unless I'm listening to a praise and worship song to keep my mind occupied with things of God but there's times where I don't even want to hear nothing just silence I want to hear the birds chirp I want to hear nature that's right because my mind cannot be bombarded with so many things all the time and a child's mind is not strong enough to differentiate what's real and what's not real. What should I follow? What should I not follow? So, raising godly children. Let's get into this for a second. I want to talk about as, as a godly parent, right? Having Bible studies in your house with your children. Because you can't rely only on the church that you attend to teach your children God, God's word. That's a bomb going off. Boom! It's up to you and I to teach them God's word. And it's not that difficult. You could pull up a topic, love God, or love your neighbor, or obeying your parents. You could pull it up in Google, and they'll give you the scriptures on obeying your parents. And you just crack it open, or you scroll down on your phone, or your iPad, or your laptop, whatever. You open your Bible. And you sit down with your kids, you pray, and you say, what is this this topic? Obey your parents. Let's, let's read the scripture. And you explain to them, what does it mean? Then you ask them, well, what does this mean to you? And they'll, be like, and they'll, they'll begin to tell you how they feel. Now, will they change right away? No. But what you're doing is you're putting the seeds in their heart. You're planting the word of God in their heart because now they know. It's not like they don't know what God expects of them. If they don't know, they just don't know and they could be deceived. And then they grow up with their own thoughts and the thoughts that subliminally is sent to them through the music, through television, through radio, through internet, and through friends at school every single day. Boom, boom, boom. It's being pumped into their minds. And so no wonder that they're changing and you don't know why they're changing. No wonder why they're having attitude, um, that's attitudes that's just going crazy and you're like, I don't understand my kid anymore. Who are you? You, you leave here, you come back a different person. That's why, because they're around these influences more than they're around you. And you got to, the time that you have with them, make sure that you have a day out the week. And it could be for a half an hour that you have some prayer and you do a Bible study with them. Secondly, right? I just mentioned this in another video. Find yourself a good church home and begin to make sure that there's a program there for your kids to go there to, um, support what you're teaching them at home hmm so if you're teaching them about obeying your parents at home make sure you find a church that has a good bible program for your child's age whether they're 5 10 whatever or they're teenagers or they're young adults find a place find a church in your area where you could go to and make sure that they're learning what's being taught at home so it can be reinforced because you need all the help you can get number three Set up some time that you can have prayer together in the house. Don't have to be long, but it's necessary. Because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers of darkness 
in, in high places. And so you got to understand that you're fighting spiritual beings and your family, and your children, and you have to fight them with spiritual weapons. You cannot fight them with anger. You cannot fight them with screaming. You cannot fight them any other way with a knife, a gun, whatever, alcohol, cigarettes. You can only fight them through prayer and, and, and meditating on the word of God and confessing the word of God. The Bible says that if you resist the devil, he shall flee. And so that's one of the things that you have to do in your household is have prayer time. So you can have a prayer meeting, maybe have some prayer requests and you all pray about them. Don't have to be long. But by you coming together and praying together about a particular um, issue, then you see God answers those, pr those prayers. It raises everybody's faith in the house. Not too long ago, um, I remember my um, my wife and I was talking. We said, you know, we got to get another car, a second car. You know, because before we just had one for a while because that's all we needed. So we said, you know, we're going to get another one. And my daughter was like, my youngest daughter was like, you know, I really want another car, daddy. Blah, 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 blah. I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. Let's pray about it and watch God answer the prayer. We prayed about it together. And I said, in your own time, I want you to continue to pray about it. Not too long after that, we was able to get another vehicle. And the way that it happened was so like supernatural. A friend of ours um, uh, was contacted by somebody else who was selling a car and they thought about us and they brought the car up to us. Right. So it's not like we went to a dealership. God connected us to the people who were selling the car to someone we knew. But it started with prayer. And I want to say is that now my daughter's faith even went to a whole nother level. My son's faith went to a whole nother level. My wife's faith went to a whole nother level because this is something that we prayed about. Huh? Number four, the music. Make sure in your household if you want to raise godly children, that you begin to in, in, introduce them to music age appropriate, gospel and praise music. It could be contemporary Christian or gospel, whatever, but something that's singing praise to God, something that's bringing praise to our creator. I have never been depressed or was able to stay depressed when I listen to praise and worship music. I may have been sad, when I listen to it, and as I begin to listen to it, the words begin to go inside of me and it was like healing to my soul. And I would cry out to God and I would start to feel better. Or I already was feeling good and the praise song came on and I start praising God and I feel like my soul is being lifted even higher. So introducing your children into to music that praises God is another way to help raise godly children. Number five, sorry if I got these numbers mixed up at this point, but number five, introduce your children into godly movies. There's a lot of good Christian movies that's out there, right? That you can look at, that your children can look at and see a, a message about God in the movie. Now, is every movie gonna be a Christian movie? No. All right, let's, I'm not trying to be like, rah, rah, like everything is, no, but we still got to monitor what our children watch because the images and the words get into their spirits and it makes them want to live out what they see and what they hear, right? So no, you're not watching nothing with violence, with, you know, with, with murders going on and sexual content. No, no, we're not doing that. So it's got to be something where it's age appropriate and it's still entertaining at the same time. But I also want to incorporate some Christian movies with some Christian values that they can say, whoa, okay, man, Jesus is real or God is amazing. You know, I could go to him in prayer or look how he came through. Like there's a movie called I Can Only Imagine. Now, my wife had told me about this movie. Oh, I want to see this movie. And at first I was a bit skeptical because the movies in the past that I've seen some Christian movies were not, I want to say, not up to par with some of the movies I've seen that are not Christian movies. But I said, you know, let me check this movie out because I need to watch a good Christian movie. And let me tell you something. This movie, I only, if I only could imagine, I only could imagine, 
was the, one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. I cried like a baby. I don't want to give it away, but if there's a movie I'm recommending for you and like a family night, I can only imagine it was an amazing movie. And everybody had tears in their eyes. I literally cried and boo hooed. Like, woo hoo hoo, And you know, my wife had told me about this movie and I was like, you know what, you're absolutely right. This movie was amazing. And so these are just some of the ways to um, help bring your children and raise them godly, right? By instructing in good Christian values into them. So they can know about Jesus and follow his way. Because the Bible says, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they get older, they shall not depart from it. So if you're doing your best and you're praying over your children and you're teaching them these values and principles, then you're doing your part. God's always going to do his part. Right? But we just need to put the seed inside of them so that it can water and grow. This is your man, Mike Bowens. If you have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and let's continue to move forward by faith. This is your man, Mike Bowens. Once again, signing off saying, be blessed.